Hello and welcome to Love Anything Art. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Also, check out my second channel, Frugally Delicious, where I make budget foods on a budget. Hey guys, welcome, welcome, welcome. Another fun project today. I was having fun today. It was cold and I'm having fun. Anybody else use hair scrunchies to wrap up their clay <laughs> in the plastic? I had some old hair pieces and instead of throwing them away, I was like, you know what? These work just like rubber bands. I usually use rubber bands, but I was like, you know what? There is no need to throw these away. I'm gonna be using some translucent clay. I'm cutting off six sections. I'll be doing five colors and then one white section. I'm gonna show you the colors I'm gonna use so you can see the ink brand and the colors and kind of the color scheme here. I did pick two purple colors, but they do come out a little bit on the bluer side, so it works well with the blues that I picked out though. And in the end, it all comes together nice. And then I have my Snow White. Just put a little bit on each of the clay pieces and then you'll just wanna mix them up. You can decide how much you want to add as you go. I do like to spread mine out just to get a quick dry. And then I mix them up. Just running them through my pasta machine. Of course, you can do them by hand. Man, that pasta machine does save your wrist though. <laughs> this did not come out white enough, so I am going to add a little bit more white to it. The rest of these I mixed up and they actually came out fine, but you can decide how much you want to add after adding just a little bit and then mixing it and then just keep going until it's as dark as you want it to be. These are my colors. They look quite pretty together. And just a little tit for tat, if you want to make sure you have the same colors going to the same spot if you're adding more to it, just keep the colors right above the color that it goes with. That way you can know which color it went with because it kind of all looks the same once the clay is mixed and it doesn't look quite the same from the bottle. But anyway, that's just a little helpful tip for you if you want it. With each of these, I'm gonna roll them out to different thicknesses and then fold them over on themselves. And this is so that when I'm chopping them, I can get different varying size pieces, both in thickness, length, um, and all of that. So. With each of those, I'm going to cut them up. I'm starting just with this blue color. You can do any one you want first. I'm gonna make larger chunks, and then I'm gonna go on to the next color, and I'm gonna make slightly smaller chunks or pieces. And really, you can do this as many times as you want. You can actually choose four colors. You can choose three colors. You can choose eight colors. It really just depends on you. And the reason why I'm chopping them up into different size pieces is just for visual having different sizes in there I feel like it adds a lot to the piece instead of you know them all just being the same size <laughs> I don't know it it kind of adds a little bit to it, the piece I think so you can really chop them up into whatever size pieces you want of course and I'm really digging all these colors together they look quite pretty I think And the last one I want to be pretty small, so the only way I thought to be able to, you know, get it that small and it not stick together is to use a little bit of powders. These are just some old makeup powders. You can use any kind of mica powders. You could actually use cornstarch if you wanted to. Just you need something that's going to kind of coat the pieces and break it up as you are chopping. I feel like that's really the only way to get a super small chop. So you'll see there and then all the pieces, you know, won't stick together this way. I did the same with the white. You'll see they're nice and crumbly. You want nice crumbly pieces, like little pieces of bread, all crumbled up and toasted. I'm going to take the white and just coat all of them. You can use as much or as little as you want but just douse that and then mix them up pretty thoroughly. You know, making sure each piece is broken up and coated well. And once it's pretty much dry, I'm just going to kind of mix it all up together. I didn't want to over mix it, so 
I'm literally kind of just putting it in a pile and then lightly spreading it out just a little bit. But you'll see large chunks or sections that have like basically just blue in it, the same color blue, but it's broken up by the white paint around it. So it, uh, it looks good, but I didn't want it to be like a complete mix. Like I wanted there to be large chunks of a certain color just to kind of add variety to it. Like I see a lot of um, YouTube videos where they chop it up and they mix it up so well. And I don't know, I feel like you lose some of the colors sometimes when you do it that way. So that's why I didn't mix it thoroughly. And then just kind of combine it all and get it into a tube shape. And you'll see there what I'm talking about, the large sections, nice blue, white, purplish kind of colors all stuck together. And this is kind of squishy, but honestly, it doesn't really matter. If you want to put yours in the freezer or fridge for 15, 20 minutes, you can do that. But it it's okay. I mean, it's not really going to do anything different to the piece, I don't think. But you can totally try it if you wanted to. I uh, just saved myself that step. And I just kind of flip it and turn it after I cut. And that way, it's not all smooshed completely flat into like a long disc. <laughs> You'll see there, it's kind of an oblong shape. I want it to be pretty thin. And if for some reason you want to make it a perfect circle, you can do that. All you got to do is just kind of pinch it between your fingers and pull it. And it'll kind of make a perfect little circle for you. Voila, voila. There you go. Nice bling, bling, bling. Ah, two seconds for you. 20 minutes for me. No, just kidding. It didn't take that long, but it took me a while. I just sliced them in, of course, um, kind of spread them out a little bit. Do 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 Attention, 1978 called, and they want their paint back. <laughs> this tube of paint is so darn tootin' old. <laughs> I actually uh, inherited it from my grandma. She was a painter, so I got lots of paints from her, and I already had lots of paints, so. And these were actually still usable, so I kept them. <laughs> You'll just want to coat the outside rim of your piece. And then once they are all dry, you can kind of start folding it up and over. And you just take a little bit of time to do this and a little bit of patience, but you just kind of go around and flip over the sides. Now I did this because I thought it would break up the monotony of just, you know, the blues and the purple colors in there. And you do have the little white flecks in there from when you put the white ink on there but I thought this was going to kind of give it more of a, um, a layered on top of each other kind of effect so I just kind of stacked them all on top working from left to right that way they were all kind of going in the same direction and then just overlapped them just slightly and this is the final piece here of course I am going to burnish this and Make it so it's nice and even and cohesive and flat and it's smooth and beautiful and all that. So I'm just going to kind of show you briefly what I'm doing. Really just kind of push in the sides and make sure it's all nice and kind of stuck together out there. And then just start lightly rubbing or rolling your roller across there. I wasn't really going for making it super thin. It does thin it out. but. Just basically kind of rolling it and getting everything stuck together and some parts are a much thicker than other parts so kind of had to use a little force in some areas and i kind of used my fingers and kneaded the surface to kind of flatten out certain areas and it came out nice in the front and the back the back does look slightly different because it doesn't have the little white half circles on there as you'll see so i don't know i thought it kind of Kind of added a little something to it. And my piece did get super thin, a lot thinner than I wanted it to be. So I'm going to fold mine in half. If you want to put a backing on this, you can. Just be wary of the fact that if you put a solid color on the back, you'll lose any kind of like transparency that you might get from the translucent clay. But, you know, totally it doesn't matter. The piece, I think, will come out pretty either way. Or if you want to, you can take a piece of translucent clay, add ink to it, like a white, and then use that as the backing. And of course, just cut out your piece. I cut out one of my favorite shapes. And then this is the scraps. I was like, you know what? 
I'm totally just going to experiment here. I was like, I want to do something different, but I didn't quite know what. It was one of those moments. So I was like, ah, I'll just start by chopping. Chopping's always a good, <laughs> a good use of time here. Chop, chop, chop. And of course, you know, I'm going to add some little mica flex in there so I can chop it a little bit better. And it'll also kind of give it a nice little glittery look to it. But I didn't want to chop it so fine that I lost any of the, like, colors and sections in there. So I chopped it up fairly decently, though. And then I was like, you know what? I'm going to add more ink to it. And at first I was like, I'm going to add a whole bunch of colors. But I was like, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> So I decided on green because the green and blue look good together. So then I put it on there, spread it out, and you'll kind of see here that I didn't quite fill in all of the areas with paint. I kind of wanted to leave some of them unpainted. Put that on a piece of paper, and then I was making sure it was kind of dry, and then I was like, I don't know what to do. You know what? I'll roll it up. Rolling up is good. <laughs> but I was like, I don't want to just lay it out and then cut out of shape. I was like, ah, it's just something was burning inside of me to do something different. So I was like, you know what? Natasha beads, right? Something like that. So I'll just cut it in half and it'll make a really pretty design and I'll cut it in half again and I'll kind of roll it up and I wanted to make like one of those crystal stones that are like kind of cut and jagged. I don't know what they're called, but they're really pretty. And uh, then I was like, well, no, that doesn't really look like it. So pooey pooey I'm just gonna go ahead and kind of flatten it a little bit and cut it in half because I'm sure inside looks really pretty so I was like that's what I'll do yeah yeah and then I'll just put it inside of a mold because at this point I don't have a lot of clay and I'm running out of patience so <laughs> I gotta do something here I gotta make something I gotta use this clay so then I was like you know what this is just screaming I'm a beautiful heart so I took the pieces that I cut and then I put them inside of the heart and I kind of went through that just so you'll know how I got to this point. So if you have leftovers and you make this project, I mean, that's kind of what I did. And I love the way this turned out. I really like the dark blues. And you can kind of see some of the light blue that got stuck inside of the dark blue. I just love it. And then all the white ink on there, it just added so much dimension. And then the back... Of course, the front and the back is kind of the same because I folded it in half. And then I had this old necklace, like um, choker necklace thing. I was like, you know what? This is really pretty. And I think it would be just perfect for this. I have to use it for something. So I decided to add it to this. And then I had another one of those, but it's uh, silver and not gold. And then this is the heart, of course. And all the pretty little lines in there. I don't know. It looks like... Um, like bark of a tree if like you painted it like different shades of green kind of just rough and barky <laughs> I don't know that's what it kind of looks like to me but I hope you enjoyed this video and hope you had a little fun listening to me just yabber on <laughs> and of course I appreciate you watching thank you so much for watching bye